I feel like something that separates my channel from a lot of other channels in the manosphere is that I openly and unapologetically advocate for men to embrace their emotions and be vulnerable. And this video is another case of that. This has gotten me some flack in the past, okay? A lot of people have criticized me for embracing my emotions and for encouraging other men to embrace their emotions as well. Because unfortunately, there is a stigma in society, especially amongst men today, that emotions make you weak. I want to show you guys that emotions are actually masculine. Now, first off, I want to talk about some of the fundamental differences between men and women that I've noticed on my journey. Okay, and a lot of you guys will probably resonate with this. So when I started my YouTube journey, a lot of my male friends were extremely supportive, much more supportive than I ever anticipated. My female friends were supportive, but from a distance. Granted, a lot of my female friends live far away from me, literally, so they couldn't have been supportive in the way that my male friends were. But I'm talking about staying out filming videos with me in 40 degree weather at midnight for nothing in return. That's the type of support that my male friends showed me. I'm pretty, pretty sure that my female friends would not have done that for me. There was a point in time after I got my heart broken that I had a very cynical, pessimistic view on women because of this. I was of the belief that women didn't show support for you and your dreams because they were hypergamous. They wanted a sense of security. Okay, this was something that I was very, very bitter about. I was one of those, okay? I was in red pill rage for a good minute there. But over time, I realized through my own reflection that although women weren't as supportive of my dreams, they were very supportive of my well being. In fact, they were more supportive of my well being than my male friends were. You see, when I was going through depression, the women, the female friends, those were the ones who were there for me. Now, that's not to say that my male friends didn't want to be there for me. It could be that they just weren't equipped for that. And in the same way, my female friends weren't equipped to be there for me to support my dreams in the same way that my male friends were. And that brings me back to the fundamental difference between men and women. Men resonate with ambition. Women resonate with emotion. And they show their support in kind based on what resonates with them. Okay, so for me to expect my male friends to be there for me when I was in my vulnerable emotional state in the way that my female friends were, wouldn't be fair. The same goes for me expecting my female friends to be there for me when I was trying to kickstart my YouTube career in the same way that my male friends were. Okay, it's unfair because men and women are fundamentally different. Now, with that being said, I feel like I have a very strong balance of both masculinity and femininity. In that I am a very ambitious person, but I'm also a very emotional person. I'm very in tune, in touch with my emotions, which like I said, makes me an outlier amongst the manosphere and proudly so. Okay, because one thing that I've learned is that if you don't embrace your emotions, you'll never reach your true potential as a leader, as a man. Okay, and why is that? I'm sure that you can agree that men are born leaders. Okay, generally speaking, in a relationship, most successful relationships anyways, the man leads, the woman follows. Or sometimes they walk side by side. Either way is valid. But generally speaking, the man will lead when push comes to shove. What are some traits of a good leader? Right off the top of my head, two traits that stick out to me are empathy and stoicism. Okay, if you want to be a good leader, you have to develop these two traits, or better yet, you have to look within and find these traits within yourself. Now, how do you do that? You do that by embracing your emotions. For example, okay, if you want to become more empathetic, you have to put yourself in the other person's shoes. Now, for a woman that you're in a relationship with, that involves you getting in tune with your emotions so that when she's being emotional, because like I said, that's her nature is to embrace her emotions you will be able to empathize with her on a deeper level and provide her with a greater sense of security, which is your job as a man, to provide her with security. You can't provide somebody with a sense of security if you can't empathize with them. Okay, the reason why a lot of people gravitate towards my channel is because I understand them. I make them feel less alone on their journeys, and that is by intention. Okay, I do that because I know what it feels like to not be understood, but in order to connect with those people, I have to have gone through that, okay? I have to know what it feels like to be lonely, to be depressed, to be suicidal. I have to know 
what it feels like to be in those negative spaces. So bearing that in mind, if you want to empathize with a woman, with an emotional creature, you're going to have to embrace your emotions so that you can truly understand how they feel and give them that sense of security, give them that sense of authentic connection and understanding that they desire. Now, as far as stoicism goes, this is another commonality between most great leaders. You have to be stoic. Now, what does it mean to be stoic? Okay, I feel like there is this preconceived notion that stoicism is simply the rejection of any and all emotion, which cannot be further from the truth. Stoicism is actually emotional mastery. It is you learning to master your emotions such that they don't come out when you need to be logical, when you need to be rational, so that emotions don't cloud your judgment in times of distress. Bearing that in mind, I want you to name one skill, one thing that you can master in this life without first practicing it. I want you to actually name something in the comments right now. I want you to name a skill that you can master without ever having to practice it. You probably can't name a single skill because it doesn't exist. If you want to master something, you have to practice it. And the same thing applies to your emotions, okay? If you want to master your emotions, develop emotional mastery so that you can be truly stoic, you're going to have to practice your emotions. And that involves embracing your emotions, confronting your emotions. And I know that that's a scary experience for a lot of you, but the reason why it's a scary experience is because you're more concerned with how other people perceive you, especially women, than you're concerned about your own experience in this life. You'd rather look stoic than be stoic. I want you to ask yourself if that's actually masculine. Is it masculine of you to be more concerned with how other people perceive you than how you feel in your day-to-day -day life? Think about that. Even if you want to give off a certain impression, you're only going to be able to do that through the power of connection, through genuine, authentic connection with people. But the only way to do that is through empathy, putting yourself in other people's shoes. Okay, for example, a lot of amazing artists, which there are a lot of male artists, Shakespeare, Picasso, Frank Ocean, okay, anybody, anybody who you might look up to in terms of their artistry, their creativity, their art is driven by emotions. You can't rationalize your way through a song, through a painting, through a poem. You have to let your emotions flow out of you. Okay, and that is one way that you can practice your emotions in a way that's maybe more comfortable for you. And not only that, but cathartic. It gives you emotional release. The feeling that you get from not only expressing yourself, but creating something that can help other people express themselves, help other people feel understood, is a feeling that can't be quantified through any number, any dollar amount, any subscriber count, anything. Okay, that is a level of success that cannot be quantified. It can only be experienced. And I want each and every one of you to experience that because I get to experience that on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's amazing. But the only reason why I've been able to do that is because I've learned to embrace my emotions and express my emotions in creative ways, in ways that resonate with people. Okay, I've learned to master my emotions such that I don't let my emotions stop me from doing what needs to be done. Speaking of Nirvana, it was there.